Uh, yeah, it was a difficult match um, for both of us. Obviously, we're both struggling with the serve, and the conditions weren't easy today. A lot of wind. Um, but overall, I think that I hung in there mentally, and that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, Adam Gatron Observer. Um, I wanted to ask you about during the third set uh, when you were down three love, you started saying like, it's in my head, it's in my head. And uh, I just wanted to take us through that moment and how you overcame it and ended up winning the match. Yeah, it was like um, pretty much from three, uh, three love up in the second to that point, I was reverting back to old mentalities. And I said, if I was going to lose, I'm not going to lose like this. Um, so I had to change and that's what I did. I think I got to a point where I was being too negative on myself and, you know, she's a frustrating player to play. I mean, she hit, plays big tennis and sometimes you hit a good shot and she hits a winner. And I think I had to remind myself that she's going to, she's capable of playing great tennis. There's a reason why she was number two in the world. I, I don't know where she's ranked now, but top 10. Um, so for the most part, um, I think I was falling into those frustrations um, just because I felt like I was hitting good shots and she wasn't giving anything, but that's Arena, that's how she plays. Um, you sh maybe against another player for sure, those shots would give me some more defensive balls back, but I think that's why she's doing so well and it's such a good, and she's such a good competitor too. Um, so yeah. Congrats on the win, Coco. When you look at uh, the last two matches, given the quality of opponent winning in three sets and you had a third set tiebreaker, just curious how big of a confidence booster has this been for you these last couple of matches? Yeah, it definitely gives me a lot of confidence because I know I can tough it out in those tough moment moments, and these are the type of players that um, I need to have to beat if I want to win a Grand Slam. So these matches are giving me more confidence and I know how it, feel, how it feels in those moments against these players. They're not going to give you anything and you shouldn't expect that. Um, so I think it gives me a lot of confidence, especially from both matches. I was down a break and had lost a lead. So I was experiencing everything in both matches from having the lead to not having the lead to fighting back. So I think it's these type of matches, you know, the goal is, yeah, to win the tournament. But I feel like for me, these I needed these matches leading up into the U.S. Open. So if I have a tough moment, I can look back on this. Coco, what are your thoughts on the next match with Simona Halep? Yeah, it's going to be a, another difficult match. Uh, three for three. <laughs> well, actually, no, four for four. Madison's not easy either. Um, but, yeah, so... I don't even know. I have no thoughts. I'm just happy to get through today. Um, you know, if it takes another three hours, then we're going to do it, get it done. But um, I know it's going to be a tough match. I, I think I definitely have to be mentally engaged the whole match. I mean, I had to the last three matches, but even more so against Simona because she's just a tough player and she's a vet, vet on the tour. So, yeah. So you don't have a – do you have a particular plan going into the match or – um, I mean, I will have a plan. Not now. I mean, I just got out the shower, so <laughs> I have no plan. <laughs> Usually, when do you make your plan for the match? Like the morning of the match, mm -hmm. when you're in the shower, sometimes maybe <laughs> some players actually make a plan? Um Usually for the scouting, I mean, my coaches do it, but also at the same time when you've played someone so many times, you don't really need to think much about the plan because you already know what you have to do. The real um, question is is actually executing it and that's pretty much everyone on tour no one I don't think anybody has some elaborate scouting report where it's like I mean so many pages of stuff because you can do that with each player but it's all about execution I mean I mean for me I mean I feel like I have a scouting report built to me I feel like players play me the same way now are they able to execute that's the question uh, Chikuno Shun from the score. Uh, Coco, I know you said today you kind of revert to some of your old ways, but uh, mentally I feel like that's been a huge part of your growth this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week against uh, Naomi, you said, I think it was like match point number seven, you said yeah. you were thinking of your brother or you looked down your shoes. And yeah. are, are those the types of things that you're kind of, you know, telling yourself to slow down in these big moments? Like are those type of cues that you use? Yeah, I, t I definitely try to get myself to slow down and just think for a second because when I'm rushing – Sometimes it's good. Sometimes when I'm rushing, I win a lot of points in a row. And then other times it's not. And usually I recognize when it's good for me and when it's not for me. I mean, it also depends on your opponent. You know, your opponent is like me to negative today. You're going to go faster to make them keep thinking like that. Um, but today I 
kind of slowed down at 3.0. Um, and yeah, usually um, when I need to dig deep, it's usually in those moments um, when people are cheering for me, I think it helps because, um, you know, these people waited three hours with me and, you know, I don't want to, not that if I lose, I'm going to disappoint them, but I don't want to like lose, like being like a brat on the court <laughs> um, and like being mad at myself. So it's, yeah, it's usually like looking at my laces or looking or somebody in the crowd, like a little kid or something. And I try to say if like, tell myself what would I want to see if I was that kid and I wouldn't want to see someone, you know, being down And it's okay to be negative too. Cause it's impossible to be positive on the court unless you're Roger, probably, um, which I'm not. So I think it's it shows growth, and I think that match, if you were somebody, a kid watching it, I think you learned a lot about growth and learning how to get yourself out because you're not going to be perfect, and, and especially not at 18. I have a lot to learn. Coco, you've obviously played on the biggest courts in the world, but I, you talked about it last week in San Jose and, and that court out there on the grandstand, mm -hmm. I think two or three matches in a row now. Yeah. What, do you, what do you love about having the fans that close and, and what do you feel like you get from in a venue like that as, mm -hmm. you, are gonna, as you are playing in more bigger stadiums now? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice going onto the court and it being jam-packed. I mean, people are waiting on the outside to um, just see the match from the side. And I like those environments. I mean, I like when anybody watches me play. I mean, I'm grateful to play on the big courts, so that's cool too. But honestly, like, um, I definitely prefer in a super engaged, smaller crowd than, you know, spread out stadium where the energy's not there. Um, so I don't really care the size of the court. As long as there's, like, a maybe I hope a group of people super engaged to the match, it, it, it means a lot. Even if they're against me, I think even today and yesterday there was some – the crowd was having some chance, especially yesterday, between chanting my name and Alina's name. Um, and that's the type of atmosphere I like um, because it just – sometimes you want to be the villain and sometimes you want to – I know it's bad to say this, but sometimes you want to win and make somebody else mad. Um, not the player, but I mean the fans. Uh, not that I hate – not that I dislike them for cheering me, but it just – I don't know. It makes you feel like you're in a movie or something. I don't know. I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to go back to the Simona Halep. This will be your third time facing her this year. Uh, you still have to win a set over her. What about her game makes it such a tough uh, match for you since you haven't taken a set from her yet? Yeah, I think um, she probably has probably the be one of the best movements on tour, like running-wise and changing direction and hitting those angles and getting to those shots. And she's also a fighter. Um, and I think that's what makes her game most difficult for anyone. Um, but I feel like the last match was Madrid. I was up 4-1, and I think um, I kind of had the recipe, but I think I, I lost it mentally. So I think she's a player that you have to be mentally engaged every point. You can't give her anything because she'll take it, and I think that's what makes her such a great player too. And Coco, I mean, it's very easy for people to reduce players into kind of these one-dimensional descriptions, and mm -hmm. I think for you the idea was always – the lazy idea was your speed, mm -hmm. that it, we focused on your athleticism. But over the course of this year, you become a much more positive, aggressive mm -hmm. player and taking your shots. I mean, how, can you talk a little bit about how that transition um, mm -hmm. and how much more dangerous you feel right now because uh, you're doing that? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm more of a threat. I think um, for sure I was relying on it a lot and it's great, but also I needed to rely on it on a more of offensive way. I feel like um, you know, everybody knows I'm fast. Like, I'm not trying to be cocky, but it's the truth. Um, and I know that too. And I know that I think sometimes I, um, you know, just go and just put the ball in the court because I know I can run it down. And that was my old mentality. But now I think I'm trying to take my chances more and be more aggressive because, you know, playing that way would definitely, you know, get me, you know, quarterfinals or fourth round and slams. But to get to that final moment, you need to take care of those details. And I think I'm slowly taking care of those details. And I think, um, you know, a lot of people have been telling me they notice a difference in my game. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel like it. But <laughs> I'm glad that people are noticing because it, it's been a lot of work. And I have a long, long, long way to go. But I think I'm in, heading in the right direction. Uh, speaking of those details, uh, Diego Moyano joined your team this year. How has he kind of helped yourself specifically with your forehand and maybe even your serve as well? Yeah, Diego has been great. I think definitely the one of the best decisions that I've made. Um, first, it wasn't really about the tennis, too. It was about 
Um, I would say the first half of the year, I was n- not believing in myself at all. And when I had them had join him, had him join the team, he was super positive and and it made me believe. I mean, yes, my dad is always positive about my game, but you know, you hear it your whole life, so you don't really believe it. So having someone outside, um, and sometimes you're like, oh, it's just my dad, so of course he's gonna say that. But having someone outside, um, you know, come in and say this, these things, and obviously, yes, he's made some improvement. I think you guys can see on my forehand and my serve. Um, there's definitely been a drastic improvement, but I think it's really on the mentality. I don't. I feel like I was almost afraid to lose at one point to disappoint people, and you know, after every match, win or lose, he always comes to me. Um, um, with such a positive attitude and I think that's transferring into my attitude because I'm typically a um, negative person <laughs> um, just because I like to be perfect but I'm learning that it's impossibly perfect and I thank Diego for that um, so yeah he's been great and I'm glad I can see us working together for a long time and off the court also I think that's important too I enjoy him off the court, his family, I hang out with his daughter sometimes. So I think it's really just my team right now. It feels like family. And um, that's why I can't ask for anything better. Thanks.